Hi guys and this is the third video of the UDK Advanced series and in the previous video I showed you how to set up Flash and get a general background for your menu system working. So in this video I want to show you how to make some uh, nice buttons to give your menu a nice little interactive feel so you can actually add some functionality to it so when someone clicks on something it's actually going to work. So uh, to start off down here we want to make two new layers for the buttons so we're going to need a button for the button start game so I'm just going to make that start game and then second one is going to be button exit uh, you can add multiple buttons if you want because you can use the same methods what I'm using to uh, add functions or you can even make it open up different SWF files uh, you can add different uh, things on the timeline here so you can just hook it all up but in this video I'm just going to show you something very basic uh, for now so to start off we're going to want to make some buttons in Adobe Photoshop so I'm just going to wait uh, wait for that to load quickly and once it's gone up um, we're going to once it's loaded up we're going to make some nice rollover buttons for use in flash okay so here we go so I'm just going to use the I'm just going to use the uh, width and the height of 500 by 100 because the screen resolution that we're using for flash is 1920 by 1080 and make sure you set that to pixels as well you can make uh, buttons with just like a little box in here so if you just do that uh, and you can have a nice box as a button instead but just for now we're going to use something that's slightly more professional and add some nice cool effects such as uh, gradient overlays maybe outer glow I don't know but just for now we're going to make a nice simple box yep so so far we've got a box that we could have made in Adobe Flash but we're going to go over to blending options we right click on the layer down here we're going to go over to gradient overlay and now you can see it's got a nice like shiny gradient effect it's going to change the color of that and uh, give it a nice gray color there so we have that nice black tint you can import your own images as buttons for into flash just got to make sure it's either a jpeg uh, uh, or a png you can use other file formats but I'm not, I don't know them off by heart all of them off by heart so this is basically what we're going to be using for our normal image for our button. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this as a PNG and I'm going to name it button normal. Whenever you're using rollover images you want to make sure you always got two different files, a rollover file and a normal file. And now we're going to change it uh, and we're going to make the second one. We can just use the same template that we've got here that we've made already. We go to gradient overlay and we're gonna basically what I'm gonna do is change the second color so it'll still be nice and black down in the bottom but when you roll over it it's gonna have a nice uh, I don't know maybe reddish color there we go okay and this one we're gonna save as button rollover there we go and save that as a PNG so that's pretty much all we need to do in Adobe Photoshop and we can just close that up because we're all done now so on the button start game uh, layer we're gonna want to import a image to the stage so just file import to stage and we're gonna import the normal file first and we're gonna place this somewhere you can have it at the side, you can have it in the middle, however you want. This is a little cool trick that you can do to uh, align it properly. So I'm going to have mine in the middle. So I'm just going to go ahead and over here, make sure align to stage is selected. And we can use these tools to align it to uh, different parts of the stage. There's a left edge, middle, right edge, top edge, and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to have it yep I'm just gonna put it up here slightly there you go that looks around that looks pretty decent for now I know it's covering the zombies head uh, but you don't really need to worry about that so as the button you're gonna want to make it a symbol and to do that we're gonna make a symbol uh, yeah a button 
Uh, by default, it will probably be movie clip already. You want to make sure that's button. And I'm just going to call this button start game. Okay, maybe that's already taken. Uh, and then button start. Okay. You won't get that. Um, the name is already taken. That's because uh, second time making this video, and I had to make that. Uh, I have to use that name twice, and I couldn't. Okay, so now we've got that. Uh, the advantage of making it um, a button like uh, a button like that is you'll now have a timeline just for this object. So I'm going to go into Edit in Place, and now you'll see that it's kind of cut off from everything else in the background, which and you can see it's all greyed out. And over here you've got like a timeline separate for it. We've got the up, over, down, and hit states. So I'm just going to insert a new layer for the text. You can do some nice um, effects for the stuff for your stuff, and like I don't know, add text, colors, stuff like that. And this is where we're going to be adding the rollover effect. So I'm just going to name this. I'm just going to put in this text: um, Start Game. Okay, and I'm going to change the text color a little bit, and maybe adjust the font slightly to make it easy to view and we change this to something around 40 and that's nice so now we're gonna add the roll over image so what we're gonna do is control click on each of these in the timeline and you want to convert to keyframes and and now you'll have up and down states working so as you can see here up is the normal over is when you roll over it and down is once you click on it so what I'm gonna do here is just name this text and background uh, background just to make it easier for me it's always good to use naming prefixes and stuff like that when it comes to game development so over here I'm going to import my image rollover uh, as you can see you might think that's alright uh, you still got the old image there so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this make sure you're on the over state rather than the up state as it can mess it up a little bit I'm going to delete that and I'm going to set the position to zero so when you delete it just make sure you um, write note down the position for beforehand so if we go back to scene one now and that's just one and you'll see that's one of our buttons up and working okay there we go as you can see when you roll over it it goes red as it's supposed to. So now we're going to do the same thing to make. Um, sorry about that, it's just crashed. But now we're going to do the same thing to make the exit button. So I'm going to go to my library as I've already imported it to, into my stage. And over in here, this is where it keeps all the assets and all the files that we've used in the SWF file or FLA file even. So I'm just going to drag the button normal onto the stage and then I'm going to go to properties and I'm just gonna make sure the position is the same and then I'm just gonna move it slightly down okay no need so that's about right for this button you can remember as I said you can put it anywhere you like so I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna convert this to a symbol as well I'm gonna call this button exit game you can have uh, have other buttons like uh, ones that open up additional SWF files so you can have multiple screens or you can add it on the timeline so I'm just going to go to edit in place once again insert layer I'm not going to slow down this time I'm going to be nice and fast so here we go exit and up over down convert to keyframes there we go and now we've done that I'm just gonna drag in the image rollover Boom. okay there we go and now I'm going to test that make sure both of the work uh, buttons have got working rollover images and there we go they both now work okay so now we're gonna need to add the script for those files well those buttons just so UDK knows to 
um, trigger or function when it is pressed. So what we're going to be using is a simple fs command. So to start off, you want to just copy what I'm writing, and I'll explain what I'm doing. So over here, I'm making an on press event. Uh, basically, you can change on release, on press here, but to be honest, best for a menu would be on press. Press is the second you click it, release is once you let go of the button. And then over here, we're just going to add in this little symbol here, and it will automatically open a close one. So on this line, what we're going to do is put in a fs command, which is really easy. You just type in fs command, and then you add in the brackets uh, quotation mark and then you want to put in the fs command that you want to use and for this one I'm just gonna put in start game and then I'm gonna close that off and that's it and then I'm just gonna put this in to end the statement so that's it for making the button so let's just copy that over and do the same for the other one and then this one we're just going to do exit game but yeah that's about it really for making a button uh, it should all work we're just going to test if that works and see if we get fs callback when we click it using the scale form launcher as you can see here uh, we've got the nice little uh, command console so when i press it you can see there is fs callback let's make sure you've got that working on every button so that's about all I want to show you in this video. In the next video, I'm going to go over adding a cursor so you can click it due to it not work due to there not being one in a SWF file already. So I'll see you in the next video. Have fun, comment, like, rate and subscribe. Peace out.